every day something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Wednesday, 10th April, 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group, Venezuela's Maduro's organic law is null, void, and of no effect. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all, perils big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro's recent actions concerning the claim over Guyana's Essequibo region have sparked significant controversy, drawing criticism for violating international law. A prominent figure in the political opposition who holds responsibility for foreign affairs has vocally criticized Maduro's stance, highlighting the ongoing dispute as a clear breach of international norms and agreements. HGP's Travis Chase provides further analysis on the implications of Maduro's actions. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro's latest move to sign into law the results of a recent referendum laying claim to Guyana's Esequibo has triggered fierce condemnation from opposition member of parliament with responsibility for foreign affairs, Amanza Walton Desire. We have stated very clearly that we believe that this law, this purported law, is null void of no legal effect um, to us here in Guyana. And we certainly view this latest action by uh, the Maduro regime as being contrary to all of the tenets of international law and the international legal order. Already, the Irfan Ali-led administration has denounced the action taken by Maduro to sign the organic law for the defense of Guyana's Esequibo on April 3, 2024, as a flagrant violation of international law and existing agreements between Guyana and Venezuela. Desire shared the same sentiments. It is in breach of the um, Argyle Declaration and really um, is just another step in, in, in a series of actions that he would have taken. This is uh, President Maduro um, in pursuit of his unfounded and illegal claim on RS Equibo. The continued support of the international community is paramount in ensuring that the region remains a zone of peace, stressed the parliamentarian. It is obvious to us from um, what we see in the public space, in the media, and the feedback um, from Venezuela that President Maduro's support at home is waning. The International Court of Justice has already ordered Venezuela to refrain from taking any action that would alter Guyana's control over Esequibo. But that court order has obviously been ignored by Maduro. Outside of what President Maduro's motives might be, our concern has to be with um, reassuring our citizens that we are actively um, pursuing and securing the interests of, of Guyana. And, and a key part of doing that is involving the parliamentary opposition every step of the way. Guyana has asked the ICJ to uphold as valid and legally binding the Arbitral Award of 1899, which established the boundaries between the two countries. Travis Chase, HGP Nightly News. Opposition leader in St. Lucia, Alan Chastany, remains a champion of forming a regional leaders of the Opposition Political Party Forum. Efforts are underway to bring more regional opposition leaders on board to give voice to and share best practices with the region's opposition. The United Workers' Party, UWP, has formed a regional leaders of the opposition political party forum. On Saturday, April 6, seven leaders of the opposition of political parties from around the Caribbean converged in St. Lucia for a preliminary meeting 
on Saturday, April 6, to establish a leader of the opposition political parties formed. The preliminary meeting brought into sharp focus the need for higher levels of awareness on the con- constitutional significance and resultant responsibility that comes with the office of the leader of the opposition. The St. Lucia meeting also seeks to develop a framework for parliamentary oppositions in various Caribbean countries to share best practices to further strengthen the effectiveness of their constitutional roles in government. Leader of the opposition in St. Lucia, Alain Chasney, says consensus was reached at the meeting with an aim of inviting other opposition leaders to join and formalize a regional platform for closer collaboration. The meeting was attended by the Honorable Alan Chastney of St. Lucia, myself, the Honorable Dr. Keith Mitchell of Grenada, the Honorable Dr. Goodman Friday of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Honorable Jamal Pringle of Antigua and Barbuda, the Honorable Shine Barrow of Belize, Dr. Ronnie Yearwood of Barbados, and the Honorable Roy Taggart of the Cayman Islands. The region's opposition leaders discussed points of concern common to all opposition parties. How egregious is it to present the budget to the leader of the opposition days before, two days? You're talking about, in our case, it's about, uh, I think, three, four, five billion dollars. Um, I don't know how much it is in St. Lucia, but such a crucial undertaking as far as analyzing the budget and making sure that the people's monies are being spent and being able to come to Parliament and to debate how the people's monies would be spent. That's what I mean, or we mean, when we say best practices. We should get that. uh, We should have meetings with the Ministry of Finance and the public officers to help plan the budget. Come up with standardized, understand what this consultation when a government say it consults look like. Uh, the Guyanese constitution is a perfect example that actually defines the term consultation. It sets it out what that consultation is to look like, how you, uh, that prime minister is supposed to write to the opposition parties, the timing, the response, a whole process, and perhaps that's something that needs to be formalized in each of our different countries, depending on the culture, but consultation has to be real. We cannot have this facade that governments often have this consultation, and we have to figure out what is the best practice for real consultation. I do believe, you know, that it's an important initiative for us to say that irrespective of the tendency we see all over the world towards authoritarianism, that we are seeing in the Caribbean, we have reached a stage where our political process is sufficiently mature for us to recognize that opposition is an essential part of governance in our country. You know, not just the constitutional requirements that are set out. That is, to me, that's, you know, it's important, but it's a minimum. It also has to do with the practices that we do and the conduct of our, um, you know, our, our politics, the way in which people are regarded, the demonizing of the other side. Let's face it, globally, you know, oppositions all around the world have different experiences. In some countries, they disappear. In other countries... They have no resources from the state. In our countries, we have some recognition, but not as much as the Constitution requires and our political system demands. Chastney sees the Regional Opposition Forum as beneficial for ensuring continuity of government processes and procedures after elections. And here it is, you know, celebrating in my constituency with my constituents over the great victory we've just had. And by 10 o'clock in the morning, you're sworn in. And by 12 o'clock, you're reporting to the permanent secretaries. And imagine you've got no briefings. In fact, the government does everything in its power to prevent you from having any information, as if they are the sole custodians of that information. So in order to have best practices, this is something that has to change. The regional leaders of the opposition political party forum coincided with the United Workers' Party's 60th anniversary celebration. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick in association with our friends at Ortillion Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Mental health has surged to the top of the priority list for the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, as the organization commits to ongoing promotion amidst the region's crime problem. 
Here is CVM's reporter, Trisha Gay Kelly, with more. Crime remains an issue that not only Jamaica is battling, but other countries in the Caribbean as well. However, like many Jamaicans, St. Lucians are now concerned about the increasing crime rate in their country. The island recorded 15,357 crimes in 2023. Health Minister Moses Baptiste, while speaking at the media launch of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARPA's annual conference, said it has become a great concern to him as it is now impacting the operations of the government. Crime affects every sector of our society, from families, communities, the tourism sector, education, health sector, and the documented economic impacts on our country. The effects on the health sector are of particular concern to me. Along with this impact, citizens have also been concerned about their mental health now more than ever. They are especially worried for frontline workers the forced to witness gruesome scenes on a daily basis. But CARFA's executive director, Dr. Joy St. John, says currently there's a stress in the workplace program specifically designed to address stress levels these workers encounter. The, the mental health, the debriefing of staff in a crisis, for example, post-hurricane, or even day-to-day, -day, as you said, in dealing with situations which are pretty extreme and gross. The program caters to nurses, firefighters, emergency room workers, and just about any frontline worker tackling the issue firsthand. But even with this initiative, there's more work to be done. That's according to St. Lucia's medical officer, Dr. Sharon Belmar-George. We know it's one of the areas that we need to strengthen. And as a part of the CAFA conference, one of the areas that we know um, from a preventative point of view is looking at the family members of persons who were directly involved or victims of, of violence. CARPA hosted its 68th annual health research conference media launch on the island in late March. However, these are some of the issues the stakeholders hope to address around the impact of crime on public health later this month. Trisha Gay Kelly, CBN News. In other news, Alicia Boucher of TV6 News tells us that police officials continue to be concerned over the shooting in Port of Spain on Saturday last. Loud and terrifying explosions rang out into the night sky on Saturday. This was initially said to be the atmosphere close to the East Dry River around 8.20 p.m. It came only a few hours after the death of Darren Douglas, who was killed in Besson Street around 3 p.m., and Akil Reed, age 26, who was killed at Beetham Estate around 10.30 a.m. that same day. Police have confirmed to the Express newspaper that both incidents are linked, and Douglas's death was more than likely a reprisal killing for Reed's murder. Two bystanders were also shot at Basson Street. According to reports, they remain warded at hospital at this time. As police brace for an increase in gang violence, they say policing operations were ramped up in the capital city on Sunday. This heightened activity is expected to continue throughout the week, as police also told the Express that they are trying to decrease the potential for more retaliatory attacks. There were no injuries from the gunshots heard on Saturday night, but police did receive reports of damage to walls close to the roadway. Alicia Boucher, TV6 News. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially.